So if you're a normal person, the first question you're asking yourself right now is why is Sam wearing that jacket? And the second question you should ask yourself is did I have a good childhood? And guess what? It doesn't matter because today I'm gonna ruin it because we're looking at some of the most popular and prominent cartoon conspiracy theories out there. And we're gonna rate them one to 10 based on how believable they are. So here we go. Okay, so the first one is a Pokemon one. Ash Ketchum was in a coma for most of Pokemon, hence why he never ages. So basically his adventures are the result of him falling into a coma. His bike accidentally landed him in the hospital where he remains in comatose state and the episodes the audience sees are actually his dreams. Okay, that is the first time I had to process something like that in my life. I guess it's somewhat plausible because anything fiction could just be a figment of somebody's imagination, especially Pokemon. Like, what are the odds that there's talking animals? Not even that they talk because that's kind of believable since animals have vocal cords and theoretically could talk. It's more so that they have powers. Mewtwo is literally a god. Who's the most unbelievable Pokemon? Probably Ditto, because Ditto could literally be anybody. It would make sense though, because Ash never ages. He left the house when he was nine, and then 20 years later, and he's nine. And look, I get it, characters don't age in TV shows, but after 30 years, to be nine? And didn't he just become a Pokemon champion? So I think that's him waking up from his dream. So I think this is fairly believable. So I gotta give this like a seven out of 10. All the characters in Winnie the Pooh represent different psychological issues. For example, Eeyore as depression, Pooh as OCD, Piglet as anxiety disorder, and Christopher Robin represents schizophrenia. I always thought it was common knowledge that this is based off of psychological issues. And this became even more apparent when I saw Pooh, Blood and Honey, which is this really, really bad independent slasher film that came out because the Winnie the Pooh IP is in the public domain. Anyways though, I think this is 100% true. I think the author probably even said at some point this is true. I give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's legit. The SpongeBob SquarePants characters are the result of nuclear testing. Fans found similarities between Bikini Bottom and Bikini Atoll, an actual island that had 23 nuclear bombs detonated during the Cold War. So I think Steven Hillenberg, who's the creator of SpongeBob, actually went on record saying that this was true and that they modeled Bikini Bottom after the nuclear war site. And it's pretty clear too, like when you watch. Like if you look at the houses in Bikini Bottom, they're all made of like the engines of submarines that I guess got blown off during the nuclear testing. I think this is pretty true, so I'm gonna say 9.5 out of 10. Fiona from Shrek is a cannibal. What did the dragon feed her? Probably all the knights that tried to come up and save her. See, this is a really good point, because a dragon doesn't have opposable thumbs. So how is that dragon going to get Fiona anything that's edible? Although I guess Fiona had a window, so she theoretically could have like snagged butterflies as they came through, but that does not seem substantive enough to fill her up. So I think there's a lot of credence to this, so I would say this is an 8 out of 10 theory. Next up is our friend Garfield. Garfield is dying of starvation and just imagines John and Odie. But it wouldn't make sense because Garfield has a pretty big frame on him. He doesn't look like he's actually starving. But the only way this would make sense is if we're seeing Garfield through the lens of his own eyes, because maybe he thinks that he's normal by body weight when in reality he's probably like four pounds because he's starving. I've never actually watched Garfield. I just have Garfield Kart the video game, which is actually quite fun. And then I maybe saw one of the comic strips when I was like four years old. But I know that John is the owner and then Odie is the dog. So I'm guessing both of them passed away and they left Garfield starving and that's why he's dying. And that's why he hates Mondays because Monday is the day that John and Odie maybe died. Huh, not too bad. I'll give that a 6.3 out of 10. Angelica from the Rugrats is the only one who can talk to the babies because they're part of her imagination. Huh. Chucky died in 1986 along with his mother, that's why Chaz is a nervous wreck. Tommy was born in 1988, but he was a stillborn, that's why Stu is constantly in the basement making toys for the son he never had a chance to live with. The DeVilles had an abortion in 1990, Angelica couldn't figure out whether it would be a boy or a girl, thus creating the twins. And then as for all grown up, the teenage Angelica became addicted to various narcotics, which further aggravated her schizophrenia bringing back her childhood and thus her creation she obsessed over. That is a deep one, but that is like really well researched and that makes a lot of sense to me. I think the only shortcoming in this conspiracy is why would the parents then be friends? Like what is their common interest? Because all the parents went to Paris together in Rugrats Go Paris. So if they didn't have all the kids together, why would then they be bonding over kids and go on vacation. That doesn't make sense to me. Overall though, it's pretty well thought out. I like it, I'll give it a 5.9 out of 10. Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. I'll show you guys the meme after I read this. But Princess Peach doesn't fight back against Bowser because she's attracted to him. Or she suffers from Stockholm Syndrome. But either way, she's letting herself get kidnapped. Yeah, there's always this one picture that's floating around on Twitter. Everyone's like, how is Princess Peach supposedly a bat and then constantly gets captured by Bowser? It's like, well... Sorry, Mario. I mean, this theory has to be real, right? Because after 40 years, you'd think there's some safeguard in place to make sure that Peach doesn't get kidnapped. But there's not. I think she likes it. I think she's physically attracted to Bowser. 
And then you have poor Mario, who's really chasing somebody who doesn't want him back. It's actually quite sad. I love that though, that's a 10 out of 10 for me. Animal Crossing. So at the beginning of the seemingly innocent children's game, Animal Crossing, the player wakes up on an unfamiliar bus heading to a mysterious, unfamiliar village. There they begin a quaint new life. And this is a result of a creepy cult kidnapping people, drugging them, and sending them on their way to town to create their vision of an idyllic utopia. You know what, when I first played Animal Crossing, I did feel this though. I was like, why is everybody so cheery in this village? Like, let's be real, there's animals walking and talking, there's some guy Tom Nook that everybody owes debts to, it's starting to add up. Animal Crossing is a cult. 5 out of 10. Okay, another Pokemon one. In the Pokemon world, the only adult males are scientists or the odd soldier. One fan believes this is because right before we were invited to join the Pokemon world, there was a devastating war that wiped out most of the men in the world. This theory seems to be confirmed by this off-cuff remark by Lieutenant Surge, electric Pokemon saved me during the war. Anyways, this makes perfect sense considering Pokemon are literally bred for battle. This also explains Mewtwo who they effectively created to be like a nuke, kind of like Soldier Boy from the boys or like Shadow the Hedgehog in a lab. So I like this a lot. I think this is a pretty strong theory. I give this an 8.4 out of 10. All right, so now we have a Mario political theory. Mario is a communist. He wears all red. He has the mustache of notorious communist leader Joseph Stalin. His hat looks just like a Soviet military cap. He takes down flags with symbol of peace on them and replaces them with flags bearing the red star of communism. His weapon of choice is a hammer. The colorful mushroom he eats to power up look exactly like the ones that grow in Siberia. He's a plumber and everyday working man. He overthrows monarchs, which is part of what communism is all about. And his enemy, Wario, represents greedy cash hoarding capitalists. I have never been as convinced of a theory in my life as I am right now about Mario being a communist. What is there to dispute here? Every single thing that I just read is completely true. Mario is a beat red communist. That's just the facts. This is a 10 out of 10. I have nothing more to say here. Very well done, very well summarized. My life has changed. Also, on to Finding Nemo. So Nemo doesn't exist in Finding Nemo, of course. He's just a fragment of Marlin's imagination to help him cope with his wife's death. It doesn't help that Nemo in Latin translates to no one. Okay, this was just elevated from BS to SB, which stands for Sambucha, which means legit, which means that this theory is legit. And I give this already a nine out of 10, but let's keep going with it. The movie shows Marlin going through the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, despair, and then finally acceptance. Oh my gosh. I think it's more realistic that Marlin made up Nemo than Nemo surviving in that dentist office sequence, because that was brutal. And when Nemo survived that, I was a little thrown off, because I said, no way that could happen. I get it's a movie, but like, let's be real here. I don't think this is ruining my childhood. I think it's enhancing it. All right, next up is Aladdin. So Aladdin is set in the future. The genie says he's been locked in his lamp for 10,000 years. He also tells Aladdin his clothes are so third century, which, as many smart Alec commenters have pointed out, would set the action of the movie in at least 10,300. So that explains all the flying carpets and magic. So the issue I have with this theory is they're putting a lot of credence into that one sentence the genie said where he was locked in the lamp for 10,000 years. It's entirely possible that the genie just lost track of time because he was in a lamp and it actually could have been 10,000 hours which translates to a lot less. But while we're talking Aladdin, I think there's another theory that's really cool, and it's that Aladdin was only granted one wish, which was his first wish. Because I think Aladdin's first wish was to become a prince, and then everything else that came after it was just gravy, but it had nothing to do with his other two wishes. So I think the prince thing was the only wish that was granted, which I think makes more sense than hinging on to one single sentence that the genie said. But... There's also flying carpets, which could be future technology. I'll give it a 5 out of 10, right in the middle. And so our final conspiracy theory of the day is Peter Pan. Peter Pan kills the kids when they get older, and the pirates are the ones who actually escaped. So that would mean Captain Hook is actually a good guy that is trying to free all the kids that Peter Pan is about to kill. That is certainly interesting. I never thought Neverland was a very enticing place. Kids won't grow up because they die because Peter Pan kills them, and then the kids that do grow up are under Captain Hook because that's reality and he represents life. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this jacket, I mean this video, make sure to click here and here to watch other videos. Otherwise, subscribe and I'll see you later. Peace.